In what served as a bridge between the Renaissance and Baroque periods, mannerism flourished between the years 1520 and 1600. Our first artist, Giuseppe Arcimboldo, was an Italian painter who grew up staining glass windows in Milan, Italy. True to the style of the age, Archimbaldo's work embodied what it meant to be a painter in the era of mannerism, as he was famous for manipulating fruits, vegetables, animals, books, and other objects to resemble human portraits. An example of this is seen in his three-quarters point of view portrait for Tumnus, an oil-on panel painted in 1590. This bizarre piece of work was commissioned by the Habsburg Emperor Rudolf II and looks more like a crudité platter rather than a portrait of a royal dignitary. However, Emperor Rudolf was not upset, as he was used to Archimbaldo's style of painting because he had been with the Habsburg family for 25 years. So why did Archimbaldo depict the emperor in this way? Looking into the context of the period, Renaissance painters were more than just mere artists. They were botanists, zoologists, scientists, and pursuers of natural studies. They were true Renaissance men, masters of many disciplines, and Archimbaldo was no exception. While he served in the Habsburg royal court, he was able to study the intricate details of vegetation from all around the world, a luxury he could have never afforded if he had not been commissioned by Emperor Rudolf II. For example, corn was not commonly found throughout all of Europe, as it was a plant brought back from the New World. However, if you look closely at the figure's ear, you will notice it is replaced by a detailed and naturalistic ear of corn. Every fruit, vegetable, and flower created in the depiction is a testament to the impeccable scientific point of view of Archimbaldo. Another question regarding this painting is, why did Archimbaldo title this painting Vertumnus? Who was Vertumnus? Although mannerism was toward the end of the Italian Renaissance, it still displayed an important principle that defined the Italian Renaissance as a whole. The idea that artists made a concerted effort to revive Greek and Roman culture and thought. Vertumnus was the god of seasonal change and plant growth in Roman mythology. So, it was no surprise why this mannerist painter titled his piece after the Roman god. The abundant produce seen in the portrait is also a tribute to the Habsburg family, to symbolize the prosperity and harmony under the family's reign. Looking deeper, one can see that for Tumnus was more than just a humorous joke. It was a symbol to show how loved Emperor Rudolf II was by his people and Archimbaldo himself. The work that I have chosen for this video project is titled Vision of a Knight and was painted during the High Renaissance portion of the Italian Renaissance by one of the most famous painters of all time, Raphael Sanzio da Urbino, or commonly known as just Raphael. This painting is thought to have been completed in 1504, when Raphael was just 21 years of age. The medium of this art is egg tempera on poplar, oil on canvas. This painting is infused with many of the ideologies of the High Renaissance and clearly depicts strong humanism and naturalism through the representation of nature and the detail in the brightly colored human figures. In this painting, Raphael depicts an allegorical scene displaying a sleeping knight surrounded by two wonderfully dressed women, one of which is symbolically carrying a sword and book, whereas the other carries a pristine flower. These symbols are very representative of the High Renaissance era, where the sword and book are allegorical symbols for the Renaissance ideals of scholarship, law, and defense. The flower and the maiden on the right hand serves as a depiction of love and fertility. These themes were common in the Renaissance because of the belief that each person should be well-rounded in a wide array of knowledge and skills, or the concept of the whole person. The women depicted in this picture are thought to represent the Roman goddess Minerva on the left and Venus, the Roman goddess of love and fertility, on the right. In the center of this painting is an odd-looking tree that might strike the viewer in our modern times as strange at first, but this tree is known as the laurel tree to the Greeks and served as a symbol for high status in ancient Greco-Roman society. This is characteristic of the Renaissance period because artists of the time were striving to restore the values of the Greco-Roman culture back into art and society. But although there are many interpretations to the symbolism behind the figures in this painting, the most commonly accepted interpretation is that it represents a passage from the Latin poet Silius Italicus's heroic epic, The Punica. 
What caught my eye about this painting is the sheer beauty represented in the colors. The strikingly bright blues and greens make this painting pop in a way that is extremely symbolic of the Renaissance time period, especially the use of white to implement the chiaroscuro effect that was so popular at the time. This painting is now found in the National Gallery in London after being moved from the Chateau de Chantilly Museum in France where it now stands as an icon of the high renaissance and the culture associated with it.